Nope. Okay. okay, so exam two. is Wednesday, 2.22. And the topics are everything up through particle kinetics. <clears throat> so that means no rigid body kinetics. Um, and then uh, the next assignment is also due on Wednesday. Uh, if you want to turn it in on Friday instead, so you can just focus on the exam, that's fine with me. Um, what? Yeah, the next Friday. Today, you, if you want to, you can turn it in right now. No, uh, if you want to turn it in two days later so you can just focus on the exam, that's fine. Um, and so, uh, well, any questions about the exam or the homework? Um, all that I am planning to do today is keep going with rigid body kinetics. Uh, but if anybody has any questions related to homework problems that are going to be on the test, I'd be happy to go through those instead, or as long as you want, you know. Uh, anybody have any homework questions? Sure. You have it there? Or does... Okay, yeah. <coughs> so particle kinetics number 10. Um, so we have a carousel. Um, and a kid riding on it. Like where on the carousel? Okay. Okay. That's a kid. Um, and the carousel is spinning. Uh, it has a radius of 2.2. I'm as far as where he is. Uh, I guess I was assuming he was on the outer edge. Um, and it spins with a constant angular velocity of five radians per second. It doesn't say which direction. Let's say it's going this way. So we'll call that x, that y, z up. <clears throat> you can, uh, you know, it doesn't say anything about the coordinate system, so you have the freedom to choose whatever you want. Um, and we want to calculate the contact force, the normal force, the friction force, and the minimum coefficient of static friction. All right. Um, Well, in order to calculate any of these forces, uh, we're going to need to use Newton's second law. So we're heading towards Newton's second law. And so that tells us that we need to calculate his acceleration.
Um, the angular velocity, okay, so the, um, the equation that we're going to use is all ripe watermelons will rot. And so we need the um, angular velocity, angular acceleration, and that R vector. Um, the angular acceleration is zero because it says it's a constant angular velocity. The angular velocity is, um, we know the magnitude is five right angles per second. So we have to think about how that relates to this coordinate system. So if you put your hand uh, in the direction of that rotation, your thumb is pointing in the positive z direction. So that's an angular velocity of zero, zero, positive five. Yes. The direction. Yeah. Uh, I just made it up. You can make it up however you want. It doesn't say anything about it in the problem, so that's your choice. Um, yeah, but your ending answers. Any any time you're giving an answer in the next question, your answers are going to depend on your coordinate system. Yes, that's right. And so our, our answers for the normal force and the force of friction will be the same. And all of our vectors depend on that coordinate system. And then the R vector goes from the center of rotation, so the center of the carousel, to the kid. Uh, that's 2.2 meters in the positive x direction. So like that. So the acceleration is equal to alpha cross r, and that goes away because there's no alpha, plus 0, 0, 0,05 crossed with the quantity 0, 0, 0,05 cross 2.200. 0, 0. And that is negative 55, zero, zero. And that's meters per second squared. Does that direction make sense? Let's uh, just take a second and think about it physically. Um, there's no angular acceleration, so that means there's no tangential acceleration. So the only acceleration is a centripetal acceleration that's going from him towards the center of the circular motion. That's in the negative x direction, so that direction works. Um, and so now we'll go to Newton's second law. Well, let's... Uh, let's first um, draw a free body diagram of the kid. That's his head. Um, <laughs> he looks like like a Rastafarian, actually, with one of those hats that goes over the dreadlocks. <laughs> Never mind that. OK, so uh, his weight is downward at uh, 20 times 9.81, 196.2. Um, and then uh, we're going to lump all of the contact force into one unknown force vector like this. Um, so it has all three components, and I'm just going to call that the reaction force. You mean just a normal force? Yes. OK, uh, well, there's friction holding him on there. If there's no friction. Like, imagine if you sat on this thing, if you stood on a skateboard, 
on this thing, you just fly right off. So we know if he's staying on it, there has to be friction. So basically, the way this breaks down is um, there's a the z component here is the normal force, and the combined x and oh, I drew that the wrong direction. The x and y coordinates are the friction force. So it's really this direction. Okay, so Newton's second law says Rx, Ry, Rz plus 0, 0, negative 196.2 is equal to the mass times the acceleration, negative 55, 0, 0. Um, and so you get 1100. Uh, so R is equal to negative 1100, uh, 0, and then positive 196.2. And that's in Newtons. And now that we have this force, um, we want to know what's the normal component, what are the friction components. That's pretty easy in this problem because uh, the normal component of this force R is just the, the Z component of that force. So RZ is your normal force. So that's 196.2. Your force of friction is just the one that's parallel to the carousel. So force of friction is um, Rx. I'll just call that the absolute value. Um, so 1,100 newtons. Uh, the normal force is normal to the carousel, perpendicular. And all the rest of those contact forces is the friction force. All the ones that are in the plane of the carousel that he's sitting on. You know? Can you picture that? Yeah. Okay. So um, the only force that's in the plane of the carousel is that negative 1100. So that's the friction force. Otherwise, you'd have to take the magnitude of it if you had an X and a Y component. Okay. So if you had... Um, if it was negative 1,100 and then 500, the friction force would be negative 1,100 squared plus 500 squared, all square root. Just the magnitude of the force in the plane of the carousel. Okay. Um, and then the last thing is, so now you have to figure out coefficient of friction that is that would be required for him not to fall off. And so for that, we're going to use um, the force of friction is equal to the coefficient of friction times the normal force. So what we're saying here is that 1,100 is equal to the coefficient of friction times 196.2. So the coefficient of static friction is like five, right? Five point something. 5.6, you're falling off. So if you're doing this analysis to figure out whether you're going to fall off the carousel, yeah, you're falling off. You should probably wear knee pads or something. Uh, most coefficients of friction are under one. It is possible to have it over one. There's no there's no like physical law saying one is the limit or whatever, but I've never seen one higher than four. And definitely not like that's you have a coefficient of friction of like four for um, concrete on like rubber on concrete. Um, pants on steel is much lower than rubber on concrete. So, I mean, I suppose you could wear your rubber pants or something and hope for the best, but. Oh, like the tape, the actual tape? You mean the, you know, the sticky part? Well, um, 
that that's that's a little different uh yeah um i uh <laughs> yeah that's that could help i yeah you treat that differently that's sticky stuff is different from friction because friction can only provide a, a horizontal force sticky stuff can pull you down yeah. you know so you have to treat that differently you're falling off man okay well um i i don't know what the lowest is but this formula works for any kind of dry friction so it works for anything where um where fluid viscosity is not an important well yeah that's right fluid viscosity is not an important part of the behavior so that means this would work for any kind of dry lubricated um uh interface so if you think of like those uh, like graphite dry lube sprays and that kind of stuff, you could use this formula for that. And in that case, the, the friction coefficient would be really, really low. I'm not sure what it would be, but it would be, I would guess 0.01 or less, you know? No, the opposite. The, because if you look at this formula, it says uh, you take the normal form Materials that are in contact don't control the normal force. And then you multiply it by this coefficient to see what the friction is. So if you have a bigger coefficient, you have more friction. So what do you think caused the coefficient? Okay. What we calculated here was um, we calculated the coefficient of friction that was that would be required for him not to slip. And so we got this extremely high coefficient, which means we're not never going to meet that standard, you know. Yes. Uh, we wouldn't need relative motion because the center of the carousel is still. We need relative motion if this was on a truck also that was doing something, you know. Um, the only thing that would change if, so we have a constant angular velocity. If we also had a non-zero uh, angular acceleration, uh, just alpha would not be zero, and then we'd have the alpha cross R term in our acceleration in addition to the centripetal acceleration. Well, uh, this could be, like if somebody was turning this and there was a motor or something, speeding it up. This could have a value without that being on a truck. That's just whether the rate of rotation is changing or not. Um, but then the relative motion equations would only be if this motion was superimposed on another motion like a truck. Okay. Yes? Um, if you had an angular acceleration that was speeding up the carousel, yep. Wouldn't the coefficient of static friction to keep him on change with time? Not the coefficient. Um, the friction force would, well, if there was a constant angular acceleration, you want to see how it would work? Let's, let's just see how it would work. Um, so what if um, it was speeding up with an angular acceleration, it, it would have to be, if it's speeding up, the angular acceleration has to be in the same direction as the angular velocity. So it would have to be in the positive z direction. So let's say we have zero, zero, ten radians per second squared. So then the acceleration would be zero, zero, ten crossed with 2.200 plus 0, 0, 0.005 crossed with the quantity 0, 0, 0.005 cross 2.200. 0, 0. 
Uh, we know that all this comes out to be negative 55, zero, zero. Um, this one comes out to be positive 22, okay, yep. And so the acceleration is negative 55, 22, zero. Um, meters per second squared. Um, and then you'd go to Newton's second law and you'd get that that reaction force plus zero, negative 196.20 is equal to 20 times this acceleration. Ah, you're right, I did. Uh, that should be in the negative Z. Okay, so um, that reaction force vector now would be equal to negative 1100. And then uh, 4400. Zero. Uh, nope. Yeah, positive 196. Um, so the normal force is equal to 196.2. The friction force is the magnitude of those other of the vector that's in the plane of the carousel. So that would be 1100 squared plus 4400 squared square root. What do you get for that? Wait. What did I do wrong? 20 times 1100. This is, that can't be 4400. What's 20 times 22? Oh, 440. Wait. Twenty times twenty is four hundred. Okay, thank you. Okay, so sorry. Can you calculate that magnitude again? One one eight four point what? Okay, so now we have a new friction force and. Um, And so uh, the coefficient of friction is um, 1184.74 divided by 196.2, which is a little bigger than it was before. Five point. Six eight one. Six eight one four. Six point oh four. Okay, so it's a little bigger. Okay. Um, so that showed the effect if there was angular acceleration. But now you asked um, you asked if there's angular acceleration, how would that required friction force change in time? So if it's just if every at every instant, it's going a little faster than it was in the previous instant. Wouldn't that coefficient that's required keep increasing? Is and yeah, the answer is it would. Um, if because what would happen is yeah, yeah. So yeah, right. So what would happen is uh, this would stay at ten. So this would stay at zero twenty. But this would keep going up. So you keep having bigger and bigger centripetal, centripetal accelerations. And you know from like, uh, well, look up uh, playground fail videos on YouTube. That's like part of your assignment. 
like there are ones where, oh, there's a really good one where uh, it's always like Russian guys do the best, like fail. Yeah, so he takes like a motorcycle wheel. His, his friend gets on the thing and uh, takes a motorcycle wheel and cranks it up and it, and it starts spinning the carousel really fast. And at first he's holding on, but as it keeps getting faster, that centripetal acceleration is getting bigger and bigger. And then he's holding on like this and then he just goes flying. <laughs> so yeah, what happens is, as that centripetal acceleration increases, uh, it takes a bigger and bigger force to stay on and eventually you can't provide it. A single instant, that's right. That's right, so if you wanted to calculate the function, a function of time, um, you, would, you would have to, so we did this at a single instant. If it was the increasing speed and you wanted to figure out the force as a function of time, this would have to be uh, five, you know, t, something, well, some, linear function of time because the angular acceleration is d omega dt. Okay, so I guess it would have to be 10t plus some constant, you know. Any other questions about that one? Yes. Yes. Yeah, well, you can't change the material the carousel's made out of, but you could change your pants. You know? So in that way, like, so if this kid was doing this calculation to, um, to make a choice about what kind of pants to wear, you know, and then he's like, yeah, I'm wearing my leather pants or whatever, you know. Or I'm going bare butt. That's probably the highest coefficient. <laughs> Between it's all so a coefficient is always between two materials, and you could you could Google that you know like a coefficient of friction for wood and steel or um, something in ice. You know, if you have two materials, uh, somebody has calculated a coefficient of friction between those two things. Any other questions? Okay. Uh, do you have that one, Danae? Yeah. yeah, it's just there's a lot of stuff going on. Wait till we get into rotating coordinate systems. That's when it gets really wacky. Yeah. Okay, so, uh, yeah, right, exactly. Number 12. Um, so this time, it's the difference with this one, it's books on like a Ferris wheel. So the difference here is um, the orientation of the rotation with respect to gravity. Um, okay, so you know what a Ferris wheel is? It's like the vertical thing where you go higher and lower as you go around. And at the bottom, we have, like in the seat at the bottom, ah, we have this stack of books. Yeah. Okay. So there's some books down there. Um, and they have a mass of, altogether they have a mass of, One kil uh, three kilograms together, each one kilogram. Those are big books. Um, the radius of this Ferris wheel is six meters, 19 foot eight. Uh, the angular speed is 2.5 radians per second and it's going this way. Yes.
Um, it will either give you an angular speed, and you have to figure out the, the direction, the sign of the components from, the, from something else in the problem, or it will give you an angular velocity where the, um, where the positive or negative gives you the sign of that component. Okay. This one gives an angular speed, but it shows you the direction. It shows that arrow. Um, and it's speeding up at 8.5 radians per second squared. So that means the angular acceleration is in the same direction at 8.5 radians per second squared. Um, and, oh, uh, it's actually going to be required for this one that we know that each of these books is one kilogram. Okay, so we know it's doing this. And at the position shown, uh, we want to calculate the force vector um, on the top book by the middle book. Yes, that's right. That's a that's a really good question because uh, you know um, it would change your r vector depending on which book you're talking about. That would be a good problem. Yeah, this is enough for now. Okay. Um, so the first thing we have to do is calculate the accelerations of the books, and uh, because we're assuming they're all at one single height, the accelerations of all those books are going to be the same. So the acceleration is equal to alpha cross r plus omega cross quantity omega cross r. Alpha, oh, and there's one more uh, super annoying thing that whoever the jerk is who wrote this problem put in there. We have, we have a unusual coordinate system too. So you got to think a bit about the coordinate system. Uh, if that's x and that's z, which direction does the positive y axis point? It has to be coming out of the page because the axis going from x to y, the thumb has to be that way. So this is the y axis. Um, and so based on that, is this angular velocity and angular acceleration a positive y component or a negative y component? Positive, yep. Any questions about that? Um, so alpha is equal to uh, 8.5 in the positive y direction. Omega is 2.5 in the positive y direction. And the r vector at the position shown is 6 meters in the negative z direction. So the acceleration of those books is 0, 8.50 cross 0, 0, negative 6, plus 0, 2.50, crossed with the quantity 0, 2.50, cross 0, 0, negative 6. Can someone calculate that? Okay. Okay. All right. So that's the acceleration of the books. And now we're going to go to a free body diagram. We're trying to figure out the force applied. Uh, 
applied to the top book by the middle. So let's do a free body diagram of the top book. Um, so it has a weight of one kilogram times 9.81 meters per second squared. So 9.81 newtons down. And then um, it has a normal force and a friction force. I'll just write that as an unknown vector uh, force on the top by the middle. Yes. Okay, so this really would, so it would have, this force is going to be in the, um, well, it's going to be in all sorts of wacky directions. So it's going to have components like this, this, and also coming out towards us. Um, and so now Newton's second law says uh, the weight, 0, 0, negative 9.81 plus F, T, M, X, Y, Z. is equal to the mass, which is one kilogram, times this acceleration. So that's positive 51, zero, no, negative 51, zero, positive 37.5. And so the force on the top by the middle is equal to negative 51, 0, and then 37.5 plus 9.81, um, Newtons. Yeah, that's, uh, so yeah, don't get lured into that. It's always, uh, it always looks a lot simpler than, than when you have to do it. Um, any other questions about that one? Any other problems you'd like to see? Uh, yeah. Um, yes, I do. Yeah. Yeah, well, so the, the middle one and the bottom one would, if we, if we included the thickness of the books, those would have slightly more acceleration as you go down, right, because R is bigger. Okay, so you have to take that into account, but it wouldn't be a very big difference in the acceleration. And then uh, the, the top box has one force of friction on it because it has one contact force. The middle one has two forces of friction because there's two contact forces. Same with the bottom one. So, I mean, I suppose it that means that because there are these two factors that go in opposite directions, it depends on the thickness of the book and the coefficients of friction. But so I guess that's the answer. It depends on the thickness and depends on the coefficients of friction. It depends on the. It depends on the thickness 
it still depends on how thick the books are and what the coefficient of friction is. Any other questions? Yeah, do that. Put it, figure out what uh, those contact forces would be if the books were five centimeters thick or something. Yeah. The center of mass, because Newton's second law says the sum of the forces is equal to the mass times the acceleration of the center of mass of the object that you're looking at. Yep. Any other problems you'd like to see? Want to see what the answer would be to this if the center of the Ferris wheel was in free fall? The acceleration yeah. is always going towards the center of the Earth, yeah. But the velocity can be any direction. It's just the acceleration that, that has to be straight towards the center. Would be determined by previous things, you know, whether you launched it or dropped it or, you know, that could be anywhere. Okay. Uh, let's stop there. Have a good weekend.